Hey, welcome. My name is Tony Ann, and I am the director of Love Kids here at Love Lake Norman. We are a church where you can belong before you believe. If today is your first time, we are so excited that you're here. If you can go to lovelkn.org, click on a connection card and fill out some information, we would love to hear from you guys. If you have just a moment, invite your friends, invite your family. You guys can create a watch party. This is such an awesome time to hear an awesome message. We hope you enjoy the service. God, we thank you for letting us gather. Uh, We thank you for letting us have no barrier between us, God, because of your son, Jesus. And through him, all things are possible. Through him, we have a fresh start. Um, and God, thank you for loving us, for, for caring for us, for showing us mercy and grace, Lord. And I pray for all of us to find margin, to find your peace, uh, to be able to hear your voice, just like it says in, in Psalm 29 when David describes it. Your voice is so powerful. It's powerful enough to to. to move mountains and make the ground shake, God. But Lord, I just pray for all of us to hear it and recognize that you are Lord. Make you Lord of our own lives, God. Um, God, you give us a reason to sing through your mercy, your grace, and your love. And so, Lord, we worship you. Your voice like thunder, your voice His wonder turns the mighty seas It splits the mighty trees The mountains crumble Your people humbled Austria by your name The singing of your fame And your glory Glory All your people sing All your people sing of your glory, your glory. Oh, it changes everything, it changes everything. Your voice brings lightning, your voice is frightening, echoes in the air, it strips the forest bare. Your voice, a whisper to waiting listeners telling us to go and letting others know of your glory, glory. All your people sing, all your people sing of your glory, your glory. Yes, it changes everything. Changes everything and give us strength and bring your peace and let us stand in your glory, glory, all your people sing. All your people sing of your glory, your glory. Yes, it changes everything. It changes everything. Your glory, the glory. All your people sing. All your people sing of your glory, your breath, 
you breathe your life in me And you have been so, so kind to me Norman volunteers get it done. If you would like to partner with us with our Love Serves branch of Love Lake Norman, you can go to lovelkn.org. At the very top, it says Love Serves Turkey Dinner. We would love for you guys to help us with the Neighborhood Care Center 
provide 20 families dinner for this Thanksgiving season. When you click on that link, it'll take you to a page that gives you all of the details, drop off, and all of the food items that are needed to be able to help each family. Uh, each week, we take up an offering. Whether you are here as part of our family at Love Lake Norman, or you would just like to support our ministry, you can go to lovelkn.org slash give or text to give at 84321. We hope you enjoy this message. Well, our hope and our prayer is that this online worship experience helps you take a next step when it comes to your relationship with God. Now, uh, we're going to hit pause on our series that we've started last week called On Brand today. I've got to be out of town unexpectedly this weekend. But we have a message that we want to share from a series we did back in the summer called Beach Party that I think is the perfect message for right now in the life of our church. And I hope that it encourages you today. Hey guys, hope you guys are doing well today. We are starting a brand new series, thanks for throwing that Bailey, called Beach Party. This is part one. It is vacation season. Everybody's going to the beach. I was at the beach a few weeks ago with my family. It was awesome. It was an amazing time to ride a boogie board and to hang out on the sand and in the water and to relax. Some of you might be at the beach right now. Some of you are getting ready to go. It is that time of year. We're doing this series called Beach Party and here's why we're doing it. Because we are supposed to, supposed to, enjoy the life that Jesus offers. We're supposed to enjoy it. But the reality is I think right now we are fighting uh, joy in our lives. We're fighting it. We're having a tough time with it. We asked you guys in a church survey last week uh, some questions about reopening, regathering, and one of the questions we asked you was this, what is it like right now for you personally as it relates to COVID-19? Like, like how has it impacted you? Here's some of the responses that, that we got. One of them was, I'm isolated from family and friends that I love and it's really hard. One of them was my business has suffered dramatically. A lot of people feel that way. Somebody else said, I have a lot of fears as it relates to my family and some of them are at a high risk category and we all feel that way too. Somebody else said depression. Somebody else said anxiety. And you know, when we feel like that, a lot of times vacations are a great thing, like going off, taking some time off, physically getting away, mentally checking out for a little while is really, really healthy. All of us need time to relax. All of us need time to get away. But the problem with a vacation is this, you have to come back. Like that's the problem with a vacation. Have you ever been somewhere where you've felt like at the end of your vacation, I just wanna stay. Like I wanna live here. I wanna be here for the rest of my life, but none of you do. None of us do that because you can't just escape your problems with a vacation. You can't just do it. Some of us try to, but eventually, here's what gets in the way. Reality. Reality gets in the way. So Jesus doesn't just invite you to a life of vacation. He doesn't just invite you to a life where it's moving from one big party to the next. And if someone told you that that's what following Jesus was, and I'm sorry to disappoint you, but that's not exactly what it's like. You may want that. We may want to stay on vacation for the rest of our lives, but that's not real life, is it? It's not real life. But he also does not intend for you and me, he doesn't intend for us 
to have a life of joyless living, of just drudgery, of servitude, where we don't have any fun and we're not connected to any life that's really uh, helping us out or anything that's really life-giving. He doesn't intend for it to be like that too. In fact, he wants us to enjoy the life that he offers. So we're doing this series called Beach Party and our little tagline is enjoy the life that Jesus offers. That's what he offers to us, whether you can believe it or not. Now, how does that happen? Where do you begin? Like, where do we begin with that? Well, for some of his earliest followers, you know where it happened? It actually happened on a beach. For some of his earliest followers, it happened on the water. For some of his earliest followers, it happened on a a sandy seashore while they were listening to Jesus and what he had to say to them and he was calling them into something different. And so in this series, we're gonna take kind of a fun, but I think powerful look at some places and some times and some people that Jesus interacted with around the water because what he continually did in those places was invite people into joy-filled life. So, This is where we're going today, and this is a story. There's a story from the scriptures that I wanna tell you, and here's how it starts. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw (coughs) at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Imagine being one of those Fishermen, like imagine being one of those guys, they would go out at night, they would fish at night, they would come back in the morning and they would clean whatever it was that they had caught and they would try to sell it, but it was a really hard job and they would prep their nets for the, for the next night. But they, they notice while they're doing that and while they're thinking, gosh, we didn't catch anything last night and it's a lot of hard work and I don't know where this job is going anyway. They notice a commotion over to the side. They notice some people over there and it's this guy, Jesus, who, and who they've heard about and this crowd is building around them. Now, um, they were fishermen. I remember a couple years ago, my family visited Maine and we got to hang out with a guy who was a friend of the people that we were with and he fished for, he set lobster traps for a living. He was a lobsterman, they're called lobstermen. And he was like a rough, tough looking guy, a real grizzly kind of beard and just a big, I mean, guy that you, he looked like you didn't want to mess with him at all. Now he was super nice. Uh, he also quite possibly was, was uh, drinking a little bit the morning that he took us out on his boat, which that was an adventure too. But when I think about Simon Peter as a fisherman on the seashore, I think of that guy. I think of a rough, tough, uh, rough around the edges guy who didn't really put up with a lot of people. I think he was worn down, he was, he was tired and he'd caught nothing, probably really frustrated, maybe even angry about that, and he looks over there, and there's Jesus. And it's a guy that he's heard about, he's heard stories of him healing people even, and he doesn't even know whether to believe that that's true or not, and I imagine that he turns to the guys that he's with, James and John, who they were both brothers, and they were, had this little fishing business together, and I, I imagine he was like, get a load of that guy. Like, like, look at that guy over there, we've been working all night, and here's a guy who's just out here talking to people. Maybe a tough outside image, but on the inside, what we know about Simon Peter is that he had a a heart that longed for Jesus and longed for the words that he was speaking to be true and he was hoping with everything he had that maybe what Jesus was bringing was something different, that maybe what he'd heard about Jesus was true. He got into one of the boats, Jesus did, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from the shore. And then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. Now, now Jesus is not scared of anybody. He's not scared of the, the religious leaders who were really powerful of the day. He's also not scared of some rough and tough fishermen with anger issues. He's just not scared of these guys at all. In fact, he invites Simon to be with him. And there's something about Jesus that starts to break down that exterior of Simon Peter and it makes him agree. Jesus says, could I use your boat? I wouldn't mind having a little more space here and I could push off from the shore. If you wouldn't mind doing that with me, that would be really a great thing. And so Simon Peter does. And he finds himself at the feet of Jesus and all of the toughness melts away that outer facade, the the walls that he had put up in front of 
between him and religion and between him and God, all these walls start to come down as he sits at Jesus' feet. His first experience with him is sitting at his feet, listening to him teach, listening to him talk about God in ways that he had never heard before. And this, as he looked back, would be the moment that changed his life. He just didn't realize it at the time. Now this rough, tough fisherman shows us how to do this. He begins to show us, like you and me, the first thing to do in order to change, like the first way to step into the life that Jesus offers, to the first way that we need to move from the ordinary in our lives to the extraordinary. The, the first thing we need to do to go from a joyless existence into a place where it could be joy Phil, the first thing is this, slow down and listen to Jesus. It's not like rocket science, is it? It's not complicated. It's things that you probably already know if you're a follower of Jesus. Maybe if you're not a follower of Jesus today, you'll consider doing this for the first time. He invites you to slow down and listen to him. That's what Jesus does. He doesn't automatically send Simon Peter off on a mission. He doesn't automatically test him. He doesn't automatically do anything except, would you just come and sit with me? In fact, would you just come and sit and listen to me talk? If you wanna invest in your life, if you wanna invest your one and only life and you wanna do something significant, it's gonna start with you slowing down. It's kinda counterintuitive, isn't it? It's gonna start with you and I slowing down and listening to Jesus. And, and so Simon Peter does that and, and then it says that when he had finished speaking, when Jesus had, was done, he turned and he said to Simon, hey, um, Put out into deeper water. Why don't you, while we're in the boat already, would you just push, push on out? I want you to let your nets down for a catch. And Simon Peter answers it this way. He says, Master, we have worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Now, when you begin to listen to and follow Jesus, I just believe that this is true. There's gonna become a test. There's gonna come a test for you in some kind of way. There's gonna become a test of your faith in some kind of way when you begin to listen to him and begin to start to think about following him. Simon's test is this. Hey, would you just put your boat a little further out? Would you go into deeper water and cast your nets down again? Now remember, he's already cleaned his nets. He's already ready for the next night of fishing. He needs to go home, he needs to get a little sleep, he needs to take care of some business, and he needs to get back out there tonight and see if he can catch something, because he didn't catch anything the night before. And if he does this, he's gonna have to come back and clean the nets again. And he, and he didn't, he's also thinking, I didn't catch anything in that spot. I was in the same spot we're going to. I didn't catch anything just a few hours ago, and now we're gonna go when the sun is out, the fish aren't even out then, Jesus. And so there's huge potential for doubt. There's enormous potential for him to just say, I'm, I just wanna save myself the trouble. That sounds like a lot of trouble for nothing, Jesus. Maybe you feel that way too. I, I, hey God, I haven't had any of my prayers answered. It doesn't seem, it doesn't seem that anything has changed. Everything's the same and I don't know if I believe that you can or you even want to change anything about my life. Maybe you find your business right now is really difficult, it's really frustrating, and you are feeling exhausted. Maybe you're feeling like there's so much stress in my life that it's sinking into my marriage right now and, and it's in such a weird place, like I feel like nothing's wrong but I don't feel like anything's right and it feels stagnant to me. And so Simon Peter tells Jesus what Jesus already knows, which is hey, we've been doing this all night long before you got here and we haven't caught anything and we do that to God too, we do. God, I've been trying to do this a long time and nothing's changed. My husband, my wife is not gonna change. My situation is not gonna change. My school situation is not changing a lot. Uh, my job, my boss is not gonna change. And Simon is sitting there and he's in his boat, which is like his livelihood. In fact, his whole career is this picture of his life savings right in that boat with him. And it wasn't going all that well, apparently. But let's give Simon some credit. Like, let's give him a shout out here too because he does it anyway. He does what Jesus says to do anyway. Even though he voices his doubts, he's honest with him, he says, but because you say to do it, okay. Jesus' invitation to enjoy life is also an invitation to trust him. His invitation to enjoy life starts with an invitation to trust 
him. And Jesus is saying, hey, Simon, would you just trust me for a minute? When they had done so, they pushed the boat out. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and they filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Picture that. Simon Peter's already skeptical, but he throws the nets out anyway, knowing that he's gonna have to clean these again and it's just gonna be a big waste of time. And they catch the biggest catch that they've ever caught. They hit the lottery. My dad taught me how to fish. And we had amazing times at these farm ponds around our town. And we would go and we would fish and sometimes we would catch fish and sometimes we wouldn't. We would mostly catch bass. That's what we were fishing for in these little farm ponds and it was amazing. I saw a story the other day of a woman who caught a 907 pound bluefin tuna. And it had a picture of the giant rod that she was using and the huge fish. I mean, an enormous fish. It's just almost unbelievable how big of a fish that is. And I, I started thinking, well, what's the, is that the world record for tuna? And it's not. Somebody caught a 1,496 pound tuna in like the 1970s. That record will probably never be broken. An enormous catch. But the point of this story is not that Jesus is gonna cause you to hit the lottery. The point of it is not, he's gonna make all your wildest dreams come true. Now, he did fill their nets up and it was an amazing miracle that he performed that day, but the point of that is that let's just agree that he is going to answer however he wants to. He's gonna ha- answer however he deems best and if he deems it best to, to help you hit the lottery in that way that Simon Peter did, then that's amazing. But if he doesn't, then that's okay too. What I wanna focus on is this. Let's focus on how Simon Peter responded. You know how he responded? He said when he opened himself up to Jesus, and and here's the truth, when you open yourself up to him, be ready. Be ready. Be ready for whatever comes your way. Be on the lookout, keep your eyes open. When you open yourself up to Jesus, be ready. Luke concludes the story this way. He says that when Simon Peter saw this, He fell at Jesus' knees and he said, go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish that they had taken and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners, and then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid, from now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and they followed him. You know, Jesus is not coming to make you do something that you don't really want to do. He's not coming to make you go be a missionary in Antarctica. He's coming so that you won't settle for a less than kind of life. He's coming to invite you into the life that he knows that you want anyway, even if you can't envision it yet. C.S. Lewis, who was a great writer and Christian thinker, theologian of the 20th century, he says it like this. He says, we are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us, like an er an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. And then he concludes with these amazing words, we are far too easily pleased. Jesus is saying, I want to take the skeleton of a life that you have right now and make it come truly alive, and I can do that. He says, I want to take your skin and bones and I want to fill it up with my life. I want to move you from monotony and boredom every single day to adventure. I want you to be on the edge of your seat wondering what I'm going to do next. I want you to enjoy the life I am offering you. Is it always going to be parties and vacations? No but he invites you into a life of joy. He invites you into a life of adventure. But that's gonna mean a couple things for you. So I wanna close with three things I wanna challenge you in today. And that's gonna mean three things. One of those is this, plant yourself at Jesus' feet. Plant yourself at his feet. I don't think anything starts in our life unless we can plant ourselves first at his feet. I don't think anything can start the way that he wants it to start unless we plant ourselves at his feet and begin to listen. What does that mean? Sometimes for some of us, that might be the hardest thing to do, to slow down, to get quiet, and to start to listen to him. 
to open up the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and start to read them and, and soak in Jesus' words in our lives to, to begin to say, hey God, would you just speak to me right now? I'm gonna sit still. I'm gonna be quiet and I'm gonna plant myself at your feet. Would you just start to speak to me? If you're ready to open up your heart and your life to Jesus, that's a great way to start, is to just say, hey, I'm, I'm tired of doing this on my own. I wanna start a life with you, Jesus. Would you just begin to walk and speak with me? The first thing, plant yourself at the feet of Jesus. The second thing to begin to do is this, to push the boat out, even when you don't want to, and let down your nets. Push the boat out, even when you don't want to, and let down your nets. Begin to practice faith, begin to practice trust, even in the places, maybe especially in the places where you don't feel like you can or you don't really want to, whether that's in the place of your job, where you've got to trust in some ways that you've never had to trust before. Maybe that's what you're called to do right now. Maybe that's what we are invited to do right now in this crazy time in our world. Maybe it's in relationships that feel so frayed and so distant, and maybe you feel so alone right now. Maybe it's in those places where it's time to just push the boat out and take a step of faith and trust that he knows what he's doing. Where is that place where you need to push the boat out in your life? And then the third thing is this, and the most amazing part of this passage, he changes Simon Peter's mission, and James and John as well. He takes them from fishermen to fishers of people. Did you catch that? It's what Jesus wants for us as well. It's not just simply so we can become soldiers in his army, it's so that we can become fulfilled in this world as well with the mission that he's called us to. That's how he's created us to be. The third thing is this, let Jesus give you a mission that is worthy of your life. We have one life. You wanna spend it doing something useful, right? You wanna spend it doing something impactful. You wanna spend it doing something meaningful. Jesus has the answer to that question. Let him give you a mission that's worthy of your life, would you just begin to consider what that looks like? And we'll explore that as we continue in this series together. Can I pray for you? God, thank you so much that you don't simply leave us where we are. You invite us into freedom, you invite us into adventure, you invite us into joy. Would you let us say yes to those things today? Maybe there are some who are listening who are ready to say yes for the first time. They're ready to say, I'm done doing this on my own. I'm frustrated, I'm like Simon Peter. I'm just kinda like that guy who just does the same thing over and over again and nothing's happening. And all of a sudden he looks up and there's Jesus. Maybe today is the day that some of us have looked up and realized there's Jesus waiting smiling, loving us, inviting us into the boat. Maybe some of you today will say yes to his invitation. That's all it takes is a yes. God, work and move in our lives. We pray this in the mighty, amazing name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. We will be here next week at 9 a.m. in person, 10 a.m. right here online, and 11 a.m. in on our outdoor worship experience. We hope you guys have a great week.